ability level, but I, I kind of go along with what Colin said too. He made his best pitches when he needed to, and that's the true mark of a champion. He made he was he was even better in those situations. He got a hit on hitters. He used his breaking ball and fastball counts. He hit the outside part of the half of the plate. He located better than he did until he got the runners in scoring position. Just think about the pitches that he made. I, I think he had a lot to do with that. Sometimes we have a tendency, especially when you leave a lot of runners on base, to overlook the quality of why you left the runners on base. And I'm not so sure he didn't have more to do with it than we did. On the far right. Mike Finger, San Antonio Express News. For Nathan, you really weren't hit it hard, hard at all until that, that one inning, and you had two in a row. Did you, were you kind of getting tired at that point, or, or can you take us to those two hits? Uh, I wasn't really, I mean, normal tiredness for that even the game, but, you know, we've been conditioned to do that. So I wouldn't say I was tired. Um, the first hit hitter turned on a fastball inside that I hit my spot, and then the next guy was probably their best hitter, and he hit a cutter that was down, and he just – Sat on it and great hit. Over here on the front right. Stefan Stevenson, Forward Star Telegram. Augie, did you have any trepidation about making the switch on the mound when you did? No. I thought, uh, I thought uh, Nate had done a really good job up to that point in time. And the reason he went back out, if you think back to the seventh inning, he really sailed through the seventh inning. Had a minimum number of pitches, got a three straight outs look dominating at that point and he's finished a, a one nothing game for us before so we had confidence in that mark I, I know you care more about team victories but uh, you lost the, the the streak came to an end today your thoughts on that so what so what we lost I mean it's something I didn't pay attention to I think a lot of other people paid a lot more attention to I than I did I just um, and we lost today so that's the end of it yeah, Brian Davis from Austin. Augie, not, not to pick on one person's at bat, but Barrera's strikeout in the first, after watching several guys, he, two walks, and you know, he was clearly shaky out there on the mound. Were you surprised that he went out there and was as aggressive and swinging for the fences it looked like? Well, I, I don't know that he was swinging at the fences. Um, he struck out swinging. Uh, he was, I think, I. I he struck out a lot of times before. Did you, did you feel other guys were pressing him? Uh, trying to I, don't, I didn't have a feeling that they were pressing. I, 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 I see what you're talking about in him. Uh, it, it could appear that way for sure. I didn't have that feeling. And I, I thought he would do it. He's been very reliable in those situations. And uh, I thought he'd get it done. That's why we bunted in the first place. And I, I wanted to show the team that we're, we have confidence in everyone in the lineup. But uh, the only reason I could do that was because I do have confidence in everyone in the lineup. Gil Lepreton, Fort Worth Star-Telegram. Augie, uh, after the triple, you guys huddled, UCI huddled. How surprised were you that they didn't try to squeeze there? Uh, we. I'm surprised they didn't try to squeeze there because that would have been even more momentum. But they took the risk to do what they uh, – they just ex executed so well in that inning consistently. And uh, But I was surprised they didn't, um, didn't squeeze. But we were doing some things that to help them understand we knew they might. <laughs> in the middle on the left. Uh, Steve Pivovar from the World Herald. Um, both to Nathan and Mark, this same position you guys found yourself in when you came here in 11. Just talk about what you see in this team that uh, might make things different when you come out on Monday. Uh, you know, this team has a lot of fight in it. We've seen that all year long. And, um, you know, this is not the position we want to be in, but I don't think we're going to feel sorry for ourselves. We're going to try to find a way to dig out of it. And we're going to, we got a lot of fight in us. So. Yeah, same thing. I think um, we've actually came back stronger after our tough losses. So um, that's just been the attitude and the mantra of this team since day one. And I think that's what we're going to do again. We'll take two more questions beginning here on the left. I have one for Steve. Yeah. 
I get to ask one. <laughs> Remember in 79 when Fullerton lost the first game in the double elimination? I said they were going to win. Somebody said, hey, it's only been done five times. Now it's been done six in 79. So we've got a chance. We've got the right attitude. We've got the right group of guys. Uh, Irvine played a really good game, and our hats are off to him. But I have confidence that we'll come back with the fight that Mark's talking about, Colin's talking about, and Nate's talking about. This is a strong brotherhood. I think you'll see it. We have an opportunity now. Hoggy, is that a prediction? Um, let, me, let me see. <laughs> Which cotton was a watermelon? Which cotton was a watermelon? I don't know. No, you can call it whatever you want. You're going to anyway. Yeah. Uh, Mark, Mark, on your second inning at bat, if you could take us through that at bat and your comebacker to the mound and how good a pitcher do you think Morales was today? Obviously, he's a really good pitcher. He's a first-round draft pick for a reason. So, um, I mean, he executed. He pitched backwards. You know, he fell down 2-0 and on fastballs and then threw two sliders back-to-back, -back, which um, not many pitchers will do, um, especially early in the game. They just want to get the outs as fast as they can. So, um, you know, and then he hit, hit an inside fastball. So, um, but he's the first-rounder for a reason. He pitched a, a great game, and, you know, that's – that's about it. I mean, he, he threw the ball well today. We'll take one final question. Shotgun Sprout, College Baseball Daily. Uh, Nathan and Augie, maybe you can speak on it as well. Uh, what kind of a different dynamic does it present when their leadoff hitter is also the, their best power hitter? Uh, to be honest with you, I didn't really read the scouting report too much. I usually let Skip do that and him and Trace work together. I like to go out there and just pitch, and I trust their pitch calling. So. For me, um, it's all about hitting my spot. That's called, and uh, if I execute that, it usually works out okay. I think that you're talking about an outstanding player, and uh, we've played against a lot of them in our conference this year, not to take anything away from him, but we've had to hold runners, which we did with him, and we've had to pitch really well against him because we had to do that so many times during the, during the year. All right, thank you very much. We'll have UC Irvine here in just a few minutes.
find your manger. We'll begin now with a winning team, UC Irvine. We're joined from my right by Coach Mike Gillespie, Evan Brock, Chris Ribago, and Taylor Sparks. Coach, we'd ask for you to give an opening statement to begin. Well, I think that, uh, I think for us, uh, one of the first keys was that um, Andrew Morales uh, made, pictures, big, made big pitches to keep that game from getting away from us. And we all saw how it started, and we know that he threw a ton of pitches, uncharacteristic of him. Um, but, uh, I mean, it seemed like they had guys on base every inning they may have, or almost every inning, and they were in a position to really break it open. And I think that, um, I think that he, he did what we've seen him do consistently, which is compete and never, really never give in. Um, Evan Manorino came in, gave us a little scare, and we came up with a with big pitches uh, to get us out of that inning. And then, of course, Evan Brock was sensational. Um, we had some we had some chances. We didn't capitalize, but by keeping the game close, why and with there being no clock in this game, why uh, it was it was it was possible for us to do what we did in the eighth. Taylor Sparks had a had a spectacular game, um, both on offense and defense. And uh, so we got a hit to lead off that eighth, and a good bunt, um, then a huge hit by by Taylor, and then Chris came up big, makes it two to one, another hit, and then a two-strike base hit by Munoz. So we strung together some hits, and uh, as I mentioned a minute ago, why Evan Brock was was – Really, really, really good. And uh, so for us, it was a great win. All right, we'll open the floor for questions. In the far back on the right. As a reminder, please introduce yourself and your affiliation before you ask your question. Shotgun Spratlin with College Baseball Daily. Uh, Chris, can you talk a little bit about your hits? Uh, tell me what was going through your mind. You've had an up and down season for you, get, you to get the big hit to, uh, to put you guys ahead. Nothing was going really through my mind, but um, I guess all I was thinking about was I got to get the job done. If I get this hit, we win. Aaron Fit, Baseball America. Um, Evan, of course, you have a lot of bullpen experience in your career, but not this year. Um, I'm curious, was your adrenaline pumping out there? It seemed like your stuff maybe played up a little bit. And Coach, if you could maybe explain uh, the thought process behind going with Evan in that situation. Evan, if you'd address the question first. Um, yeah, I mean, I haven't had much bullpen experience, at, l at least this year. But I mean, d definitely my adrenaline was pumping today. So I mean, it was a big game. And I mean, I haven't been in that type of situation late in the game in a long time. So I mean, it was pretty fun for me. So that definitely got the, the juices flowing. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, you know, with the way this tournament s sets up, um, with days off in between. And of course, with the knowledge that y you know, you lose two and you're on your way home. Um, it really was a, it really wasn't a difficult call to use either Manorino or Evan. Um, Evan has had a, has had a really very, very good year, a very, very consistent year. He's, um, he's among the one or two or certainly the, the shortest of lists of the top leaders that we have on this team. 
And so we certainly felt that he would, he would love it. He would love to be in there. And um, the, the fact that he hadn't relieved was really not an issue. Um, because we would have a day off tomorrow, whether we would win or lose, we felt like we could use both Manorino and Evan um, and not burn them up for Monday. Um, had, they, had they tied that game, I mean, how much longer would we have gone with Evan? Uh, that, I, I don't know the answer to that, but it really wasn't a, um, it really wasn't a difficult decision. In the middle. Uh, Lee Barfneck from the Omaha World Herald. For Taylor, uh, the way the wind was blowing today, did you think it might take two swings to get a ball to the morning track? And where does that at bat that you hit the triple on rank among some of your favorites maybe? Um, yeah, the wind was really howling in, so I knew anything lifted, it wasn't going anywhere. So I just tried to stay flat with that, and I was able to travel through the gap. And that had to be one of, I mean, it's definitely my most special and favorite hit I've had so far. So. Back on the left. Mitch Sherman, ESPN.com. For, for Coach and either Chris or Taylor as you were out in the field in the second inning, uh, did you, considering the conditions out there today and the style of play for both teams, did you get a sense that the, the coach, that the team um, had a good awareness of the importance of that second inning and the, the circumstances there to uh, to keep Texas to just one run when when uh, things started to uh, to uh, when, when they started to get runners on base well, I, th I think the answer is yes um, <coughs> I'm sure the answer is yes um, I mean pardon me but uh, the, the the scores really don't lie about us um, we must have been in we must have been in close to 40 games that have been one or two run games, certainly no more than three. So, <coughs> excuse me. So, our players understand the importance of limiting the damage and uh, putting a stop to things. It's it's a term that we use that you, we need to stop. We we just we just got to bring things to a halt. Um, I think it's a oftentimes that's a mentality. I think that uh, I think a strong mentality is a is a quality that this team has in spades. I think it is one of the team, one of the things that has enabled us to uh, have some success. And um, so that's probably a long-winded answer to your question, but certainly I think everybody understood that when we got out of trouble in those early innings that um, uh, we knew it was, a, it was a ball game. Chris, do you have anything to add? Skip said it all. <laughs> In I've never known him to be speechless. Have you guys ever known him to be speechless? Mike, you better answer this then. <laughs> the, I'm Gil Lubberton with the Fort Worth Star-Telegram. Um, after the triple, you guys huddled, and I think 90% of the stadium thought you were going to squeeze there. Can you explain what your thinking was? There's a rumor that we squeeze. It's a, it's a myth. Uh, we're trying to live that down. We're a beginning club. Um, <laughs> Certainly, the squeeze has been important to us, and um, Chris would be up to it. Part of the part of the problem with the squeeze is that you don't always get a pitch to work with, and every once in a while, some shrewd, dirty rat like Augie might pitch out. And um, so it's 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 not just an easy slam dunk um, decision to squeeze all the time. We really felt. Uh, at, at, at almost any opportunity, what we've said about Chris Robago is, is that um, he has historically with us come up the biggest in the tough situations, uh, the, the most important situations. I mean, that very situation. And, and as the count runs deep, why he doesn't, he doesn't give in. He's, he's uh, I think his competitiveness is... Uh, one of the things that separates him. We'll begin over here on the left. Uh, Taylor, uh, Brian Davis from the Austin American Statesman. Uh, Nathan Thornhill was saying that when he saw the replay of the triple, he thought it was a, a really good pitch that you got all of. Um, did you think, was it right there for you? Uh, what did you think of that specific pitch? And what about Thornhill up to that point were you all kind of struggling with? Mm. Yeah, that pitch, uh, 
I feel like I was able to pick up on it pretty early, uh, and I just put a good swing on it. I mean, I figured no reason to in the eighth inning to really wait and get deep in account. I figured just go after whatever pitch I can hit, and luckily I was able to put a good swing on that one. And uh, throughout the game, he, I mean, he was hitting his spots. I mean, it took us a while to get into it. I mean, I'm sure uh, the butterflies and all that, getting the butterflies out had something to do with getting our rhythm back and everything. But um, that's the kind of team we are. We, we, come, we keep fighting, and, I mean, we eventually figured out what we had to do against them. So there wasn't really anything that we did specific, really different specifically. So we just kept, kept battling. We got time for two more questions. We'll begin with Lee. Uh, Lee Barfnick, Omaha World Herald. For Mike, uh, it appeared you guys had tied the game in the third inning at one to one. The first base umpire decided otherwise. Uh, do you favor instant replay, and do you think that play affected your team at all in any way? Well, I do favor instant replay. I know that not everybody does. I'm I'm really I'm really all for getting it right, and um, I would have loved instant replay on that play um, and as for our players uh, I really I really didn't sense that they felt that um, that okay we lost our one chance at it and uh, so I, I really felt that I really felt the players were uh, still positive and 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 still aggressive and still I think and still believed final question here on the left uh, Kirk Bowles from the Austin American Statesman. I'm sorry if you've already been asked this, Mike, but in the first inning when uh, Andrew walked the first two batters, were you at all surprised that Augie had Mark Payton, his best hitter, bunning, or is that just no. who Augie is? Well, I, I'm not surprised. I think that um, I can't speak for Augie, but um, we would have had no hesitation to do uh, uh, the same thing. I think that when you anticipate right or wrong, but you when you have reason to believe that runs are going to be hard to come by, and it should be hard to come by runs against Andrew Morales. And so I think uh, to seize the opportunity to, to get a run and maybe two by doing what they did was sound. Um, um, I've, I've, it's been my observation of playing against Augie for, for many, many years that um, his players buy into his message that uh, that is do something to help our team win today. And so Peyton, who's a, an outstanding player, we all know that, he's an outstanding player. But I'm positive he's on board with the decision to do that and help his team get a run and j get a jump. That's, uh, we all think that's important. Well, uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, absolutely. Uh, uh, we know this about him. He's, um, he's. As, he, I mean, I'm trying to say this as clearly as I can that he can get amped to the gills, and uh, the and, and what that of course translates to is that. Um, Sometimes he needs a few pitches, and he may need an inning to become him. And so, um, I, I, you know, it wasn't altogether um, discouraging or a shock to find that given this circumstance, for crying out loud, that um, that he would that that he that he'd be gooned. You know, he was gooned. Uh, now, he might not like that, so it's okay if you don't print that. But <laughs> <laughs> All right, coach and players, thank you for joining us. They'll be available for individual questions. Please coordinate with the UCI Sports Information Director, Fumi Kimura. She's in the back.